a wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to where our galaxy, the Milky Way, is headed. And I guess more specifically, we're going to discuss a relatively new study that identifies an enormous galactic structure that the Milky Way galaxy seems to be a part of, while at the same time explaining a little bit more about why our galaxy seems to be moving toward a mysterious point known as the Great Attractor, and also helping us visualize what all of this kind of looks like. But once again here we have to start with a bit of a history going back approximately 10 years. And so in 2014 there was actually a somewhat intriguing and somewhat groundbreaking discovery that our galaxy, the Milky Way, along with all of the nearby galaxies, and specifically all of the galactic clusters near us, seems to be a part of something much much larger. By using some of the earlier catalogs observing various galaxies, and specifically observing their redshifts, back in 2014 researchers discovered that the Milky Way galaxy was a part of a region called Laniakea Supercluster, with this image representing this supercluster and published by many different press releases at the time. The red dot, that's us, that's the Milky Way. Although in this particular image we're not actually looking at the structure itself, we're just looking at the motion of various galaxies, representing as you can see a kind of a galactic flow. A much better image is right here that actually shows us individual clusters and individual groups of galaxies, including the local group where all of us are located. But in essence, Laniakea represented approximately 100,000 different galaxies, all gravitationally connected and all moving in a certain direction. At least that was the discovery 10 years ago. But in some of the follow-up studies, including some of the more recent studies, researchers realized that it might be possible that Laniakea is not actually gravitationally bound and something else might be in control, and specifically it might actually disperse and eventually become something else entirely in the next few billions of years. Nevertheless, the discovery itself and the techniques used here essentially started a kind of a new search. An attempt to conduct additional surveys and to use additional simulations in order to discover a complex network of filaments, clusters, sheets, voids and everything that's inside of them that essentially forms the mysterious cosmic web. The still mysterious enormous structure that seems to stretch across the entire universe and that seems to have been created as a result of initial quantum fluctuations during the early stages of the cosmic inflation. You can actually check out one of the previous videos in the description that talks a little bit more about how all of this works, but in essence when the universe expanded because of the quantum fluctuations it formed these initial over densities that then eventually formed the cosmic web. At least that's the current story, and right now there does seem to be quite a lot of evidence for all of this. But in order to understand exactly how this looks, and more importantly, how all of this affects our relatively tiny galaxy that's just traveling inside of this particular web, we obviously have to try to figure out what all of these enormous structures around us kind of look like. And that's basically what this new study was trying to accomplish. Here by using nearly 40,000 groups of galaxies, with one of these groups basically being the local group, by using new observations from different recent surveys, scientists combined the redshift with the distance to various galaxies in order to essentially figure out where everything was moving once again and in order to establish the overall density of everything around us. You can actually even see some of these locations that form this intricate cosmic web in this particular video. And so in this study, Dr. Velad and his team essentially conducted one of the most complex simulations using a compilation known as Cosmic Flows 4 in order to help us visualize everything around us. And as you can see the images and the videos look absolutely incredible. The Milky Way by the way is right in the center. And well here one of the primary discoveries was once again that Luniakea might not actually be our superstructure after all, or to be more specific, it's actually just a part of a much larger structure, all connected into something absolutely ridiculously massive. In other words, Luniakea in this case is just one of the smaller limbs. And so by using details of millions of different galaxies around us, one of the first discoveries was that Luniakea and obviously the Milky Way galaxy were actually all moving in a certain direction. In other words, there was another what's known as a Basin of Attraction, BOA for short. And we know that the Milky Way galaxy and actually all of the galaxies around us are moving toward it. The only problem is that 
It's actually located behind the galactic bulge, so it's extremely difficult to figure out what's there. Because all of this dust is blocking the view, this region is extremely difficult to study. Scientists refer to this as ZOA, Zone of Avoidance. But inside of this Zone of Avoidance, we've always known about this one particular region referred to as the Great Attractor. You can actually learn about this in some of the videos in the description, but in essence it's a point where everything around us seems to be moving toward. A mysterious point that potentially produces a lot of gravitational pull, or much more likely, a location along the cosmic web where a lot of galaxies around us seems to be flowing toward, or essentially it's a kind of a downstream inside one of the networks of the cosmic web. But in this new study, scientists discover something else that's even more intriguing. Turns out that even the Great Attractor, and everything around the Great Attractor, seems to be moving toward the same location as well. In other words, the flow does not stop at the Great Attractor, it just keeps going. And so all of the structures you see right here, including the humongous Laniakea, along with all of the additional groups, seem to be kind of attracted towards something else. And so intriguingly, Laniakea and all of the galaxies in it seem to be actually headed toward what's known as Shapely Supercluster. And specifically the location scientists now call Shapely BOA, Shapely Basin of Attraction. And Shapely Supercluster has been known to us for a very long time. It's essentially the largest concentration of galaxies in the nearby universe that seems to be at least 650 million light years across. But because Shapely Supercluster appears to be moving in the same direction as Laniakea, and they all appear to be moving toward the same point, this basically suggests that all of the galaxies inside Laniakea, including the point known as the Great Attractor, seem to be moving toward Shapely Supercluster and some kind of a point inside of it. Now I guess we can call it a Shapely Great Attractor. Which basically means that Laniakea is just a much smaller part of the much larger cluster, or just to rephrase this, the Milky Way is part of the Shapely Supercluster as well which in total encompasses over 700 million light years of galactic space and thus form one of the largest structures out there, but not the largest. As a matter of fact, one of the additional discoveries in the study is essentially other superstructures and their overall map. And amongst these newly identified regions, one of them really stood out, the so-called Sloan Great Wall. It seems to be the largest basin of attraction currently known to us, and as you can see from this simulation, is definitely much larger than Shapely and Laniakea together. But here you can actually see some of the other structures as well, which in essence creates this beautiful three-dimensional map of enormous superstructures traveling in outer space following the mysterious cosmic web, making this a really impressive achievement and a really beautiful image. And because here we're talking about space billions of light years across, it's obviously somewhat difficult to put this in a perspective because here we can't even see the Milky Way galaxy, forget about seeing planet Earth. But importantly, this new study provides us with a completely new look into the gravitational landscape of the nearby space, showing us how various galaxies and cosmic structures evolved over time and very likely will continuously evolve for billions of years. It also kind of reshapes our understanding of the cosmic flow just a little bit, while also revealing extremely massive structures we've never really imagined, and the enormous influences they have on galaxies around us, just because of the sheer amount of mass involved. Although in this case, once again, this only focuses on the overall motion of galaxies. In other words, what you're seeing right here is a structure formed through densities of galaxies as they move across outer space. As a matter of fact, the galaxies on the outskirts here, technically, because of the expansion of the universe, are moving away from us at 30,000 kilometers per second. But in this particular simulation, it's very difficult to imagine any of this, and so even grasping at what we're actually looking at here is a bit challenging. But it definitely looks really cool and somewhat artistic. I mean, this is real art, the art of the universe. Although when it comes to understanding the actual map of the universe, I think this here presents us with the best visual representation. Here this shows us the distribution of these basins of attraction and various loosely connected superstructures that hundreds of thousands of galaxies seem to form as they travel in the cosmic web. But because all of this also shows us how the universe will most likely evolve over time and how many of these structures will change as well, I'm sure in some of the future studies, researchers might even be able to predict where all of this is going to end up in the next few billions of years. 
eventually helping us answer questions about the eventual fate of the universe, and of course the fate of our galaxy as well. But it's also important to remember that this only represents a part of the universe, roughly around 1 billion light years away from planet Earth. And since the observable universe is much, much larger, with time this picture will probably expand as well. In other words, the distance from the Milky Way to the edge observed here only represents like 2% of the observable universe. And so these are the largest nearby structures, but not the largest structures in the entire universe. But I guess the biggest takeaway from the study is just the fact that we now kind of understand why the Milky Way galaxy is moving toward the Centaurus constellation and why something like the Great Attractor even exists. It essentially represents a body of attraction or a kind of a central gravitational point toward which millions of different galaxies all seem to be moving at the same time. There's probably nothing specific there, but it all seems to be connected to the flow of galaxies inside the cosmic web. So in some sense it's like moving down the stream on the river with the river itself potentially connecting to something else eventually. Exactly what though, we still don't know. Mostly because, as I mentioned, it's just really difficult to observe this region. But in some of the future studies, once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and discuss this in more detail. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.